Hello, welcome back to our channel. Two brown girls here, Miss Kev on stage, and I am here doing a oily girl essential video. So this is all the things that you need um, as an oily girl. As you know, I am an oily girl. I'm acne prone, and there were a few comments and some people that watched the videos that I know personally that were kind of hitting me up on some products that I use because they struggle with oily skin and so I just decided to do a full video regarding my skincare products that I use, the primers that I use, the foundation that I use, setting powder that I use, um, finishing powders that I use, the whole gamut, everything, everything that I use. Um, of course what you need to know is skin is very unique. Um, each person's skin is very different. I can give you the products that work for me and the reasons why. You may try them and hate them know that that doesn't discredit you know what I like and if I like them or if I don't like them and you do that doesn't discredit what you like everyone has to kind of find their own way has to find you know the right products that work for them that you know react well with their skin this is just what I have found works for me so take it or leave it if it sounds good to you try it if you don't like it you know then don't buy it again or take it back a lot of these products are from Sephora you know they have a great return policy so um, we're just gonna drive right in okay so first thing I'm going to do is start with my skincare because you cannot have a great makeup if you don't start with the skin and it has been my mission to get my skin to a place where I'm happy with it um, I'm a little, you may see a little white happening on this side because I was going to do my makeup first and then do this video. So I started applying primer and I was like, no, I'll just make that part of the video as well. So I'll actually do my makeup as well. So you can see the products that I use, why, how they interact with my skin, how they perform, and then you can get an idea if you want to use them. So starting first with skincare, I wash my face every single night when I take off my makeup, because I am an oily, acne-prone girl, I cannot stress enough how important it is to wipe the makeup from your face and then wash your face. Not just using a makeup wipe, like actually washing your face. First thing that I use is this Curology. I use this every single night, just a little dab, and I just, you know, put it all over my face. It's not a spot treatment. I actually put it all over my face. After I wash my face with the zinc soap, I use this. This is solely for acne. So it doesn't help with like scarring, like minimizing or um, reducing the appearance of scarring, but it does help to control acne. So if you're an acne prone girl, I definitely recommend at least trying this product. I'll leave a link in the description box below to the website so you can check it out. I also talked about this in my skincare video. Um, this is really good stuff fairly inexpensive you can use this in addition to whatever else you're already using for like your face wash and all of that and just add this in so this is great definitely recommend it has definitely helped control um, my acne and keep my skin looking really clear as far as texture is concerned I still have old acne marks those are just harder to get rid of um, but as far as new blemishes showing up this has done a great job controlling those Next thing that I just recently started using, and this is in regards to smoothing out the texture of my skin, so reducing, they're not pimples, they're just bumps, like I just don't have like really nice smooth skin, and I want it to reduce the um, size of my pores right in here, because listen girl, they were so big and it was driving me insane. Um, so I've been like on a kick to minimize those as much as possible. So I was doing some research. I definitely recommend doing your research. If you're going to spend your hard-earned cash on something, do your research first. Like before you get it, do research. And that's, I'm a strong believer in doing research, figuring out why does it work for this person? Is your skin similar to that person that you think, so therefore you think it'll work for you? Like all of those things are very important. Read the reviews. I'm a huge review reader anytime I'm looking at a product I always read the reviews and I always start with the worst first I always want to see what the people that had the worst experience I want to see what they had to say and why because I want to see if there's a possibility that my skin can interact the same way with this product so this is the Ole Hendrickson balance control kit it's three pieces and it comes just very similar if you ever use proactive where it has a wash it has a toner and then it has a moisturizer that's what this set has except it's an oil control 
set. So it does not help with acne at all. It does help to minimize the appearance of my pores, which I can attest actually has helped dramatically reduce the appearance of my pores right in here. And it helps to control oil at the source. So I'm not just applying primer trying to control oil. It's actually changing like the chemistry of my skin in order to control oil, which has been phenomenal. I can really tell the difference and how much long wearing my, my makeup is. I don't get as oily, like it's been phenomenal. This is the set right here. So it comes with a wash, find your balance oil control cleanser. I literally use a drop of this. I use it in the morning and at night. Then we have the balance force oil control toner, the counterbalance oil control hydrator. So I use this literally every single night. I use the zinc soap to wash my face initially. Then I use a dab of this um, in the shower to wash my face again. Get out the shower. I use this. This is at night. And then I use this. Curology and then I apply the hydrator. So these are my go-to um, morning routine, night routine. And let me tell you, it makes a difference. Highly, highly recommend. I've been using it for about three weeks and I love it. Like I said, I already immediately noticed the appearance of my pores have gotten a lot smaller. I did just recently get a facial. I think that helped too, just to kind of, you know, unclog my pores, get some of this dirt and grime out because over time, you know, you just can't get it all out. I've also started using um, more exfoliators. So again, Ole Hendrickson, and this is the Pore Balance Facial Sauna Scrub. And this is basically a exfoliator. It does warm up, which is a little weird at first. I didn't real like I knew it said sauna and I do always Another tidbit, whenever I buy a product, I always read the claims. The only way you're going to know if a product works for you, the only way you're gonna know if a product is performing the way it's supposed to is if you read what it claims it's supposed to do. So I'm a huge reader, read the directions, figure out what the manufacturer says you should do, how you should use it, because they're gonna tell you the best way to get the most out of this product. And then I always read, what is the product supposed to do? How is it supposed to act on my skin? That's always a big deal for me because if I'm looking for something that's supposed to you know, clear up acne scarring, and I, that's what I want out of a product, but I buy this and it's not doing this, I'm gonna be dissatisfied with this product because that's not the purpose of this product. So always read the claims. I'm a huge, big reader on the claims. What do, what do you claim this should do for me? Girl, if you're only supposed to use this two to three times a week, I love it. I definitely feel the difference in this product like it's amazing what it is doing for my skin like this whole Ole Hendrickson I'm a fan of 100% I feel like it's awesome so definitely try this and then I also got the Dr. Brandt microdermabrasion exfoliator age defying exfoliator this is pretty heavy duty I actually think this was like $74 I know don't judge me so this is pretty expensive um but again I believe in great skincare products. I know I'm spending a pretty penny on it, um, but it's working, girl. I'm not gonna lie to you. This stuff has been phenomenal for my skin. Like it's just been doing wonders. Not just, I've always been mostly focused on like controlling my acne. Now I'm focused on controlling or getting a handle on the texture of my skin. So it just feels softer. It feels smoother. It looks smoother in tone and texture. Um, there's no new bumps coming up. My pores are smaller. These are all things that are important to me beyond just controlling acne. And these products that I've just mentioned have done that and they've done phenomenal. So that's that. Um, I just, or no, actually I've had this for a while for under eye area, under here, controlling puffiness and bringing luminosity and brightness under this area. And that is the Origins Ginseng Refreshing Eye Cream to brighten and depuff. Again, I always read the claims, girl, because I want to make sure that's what it's doing. Um, I'm a little iffy on this. I don't know that I highly recommend it as the other ones. I do use it still because I paid a pretty premium fee. I think it was like $34. Um, so I do, still do use it. I can't say that I'm a huge fan of noticing the difference. I almost look like everything looks the same. Um, but I do include it just because, you know, just as a just in case. So those are my foundation 
products. This is what I use on a daily basis to control acne, oil, um, get smoother texture, smooth out fine lines, um, decrease puffiness under the eyes, all of those things. If any one of those are concerns for you, I definitely recommend trying you know, one of these products or a mixture or all of them. I am a huge fan. Next, we're gonna jump into my primers. So when you're an oily girl, um, controlling oil underneath your makeup is definitely huge. It'll help, again, to minimize pores, shrink them, make the, your makeup just look a lot more flawless and airbrushed on the skin. And it'll help your makeup stay longer because your oils won't be coming through breaking down the makeup through the day. So the number one primer that I have been using lately is the Becca Ever Matte Poreless Primer. Stuff is heavy duty, <clears throat> but I love it. I've had it for actually quite a while, probably nine months or so and um, I'm a fan I, d I have the another one that I'm gonna use when I'm done with this and I'll decide which one I look I like better but for now this is doing like it does what it's supposed to do I definitely notice that it minimizes my pores and it helps to control oil I'm gonna put some on right now because I am gonna go into my foundation routine so normally what I do is I just pour a dab on my hand about that much you don't need a lot and again, I've already done this side of my face and you can actually, hopefully you can see the difference, how this side is still shiny and this side is very matte and it almost has like a white cast. I like the white cast because it just tells me that it's working, like it started kicking in. So I just dab my finger in it and I just press this into the area that I have the pores where I'm gonna press this because that's where it's going to fill those pores and make it smoother on the skin. Then I do my forehead because I get oily there and I actually get oily above my eyebrows as well. So I tap that area as well. And I definitely, my makeup starts to break up at the end of the day on my chin where I get oily. So all of those areas that I primarily get oily, that's where I put this. So of course, down my T-zone. <clears throat> and then I tap in here to fill the pores. Other primer that I use is the Benefit Professional Primer. And this is pretty much, in my opinion, all it does is minimize its pores. It doesn't control oil. Um, I definitely don't feel like it's an oil controller. So if oil is not a concern for you, but you have bigger pores, I would try this. Uh, I have to use this in combination with an oil control because this is just not enough for me personally. So I just, again, take a little bit on the back of my hand and this is just added to minimize those pores. So all I do is stick this in here around my nose and right in this area where my pores just be saying hello and I don't want them to speak. And again, I'm just patting this lightly into that area. Okay, and then I like to let that sit um, and kind of dry and give me that white cast and that just kind of lets me know that it's kicked in and it's working. So while this is sitting, I will move on. So Deandra and I just recently did a video where we talked about applying your translucent powder onto your face prior to applying your foundation. Um, I'm a huge fan of this if I'm going to an event and it's going to be all night and there's going to be a lot of people and I'm going to be sweating and my body heat's going to kick in. I know my oils are going to kick in. That is something that I do to ensure my makeup will last all day and I won't become an oil slick by the end of the night. So what I normally do is take my Laura Mercier translucent powder in medium deep and I take it on a powder puff. This is just a disposable one that I got from Ulta, just a four pack. And <clears throat> all I'm gonna do is pour a little bit into the cap. Not much. And I'm gonna put some on, tap it onto the puff. And just distribute the part the product all over so it doesn't come get on patchy on my skin. And I'm just going to take it and lightly, it's gonna provide a little bit of coverage and kind of diffuse those areas of like hyperpigmentation, which I love. I didn't color correct, I haven't been color correcting lately because sometimes you can do it too much and you can turn orange and my acne spots aren't so bad. 
So I definitely go over my eyebrow because again, that's where I get oily. Again, this isn't something that I do every day. Like when I'm just going to work, I don't, I don't do this step. Primer is more than enough. But if I'm going to an event, I, I will do this step. So that's it. And you can see, see how this is turning white? Up here, it's turning white. I'm kind of looking ashy. That's what I want my prior to, primer to do. That's what I like my primer to do. If you don't like that, I definitely wouldn't recommend the Becca Evermatte because that's what it does. And that's what I like. So now that that's done, what I will do is move on to my brow. To highlight and carve out the bottom part of my brow, I'm going to use the MAC Studio Finish Concealer Duo in NC40 and NC45. And I mix them to give me about an NC43. If you're a person that has oily eyelids, which I'm not, but I'm trying to give you like all the oily basics. Um, if you're a person that has oily eyelids and you find that your eyeshadow creases quite often, if you use a primer or if you use concealer, take your finishing powder. This is um, Max Mineralized Skin Finish in Dark Deep and set it and that'll help with creasing. So I'm just going to take the same brush, dip a little bit and put it over that concealer. It'll also help to get rid of that creamy consistency that you will have left over from using the concealer, but it'll also just help your shadows not crease. Okay, so that's the basics. I'm going to do my eyes off camera because that's pretty much standard. There's nothing special that I do, but I'll do my foundation on camera so you can see the different foundations that I use, why, and all of that. So stay tuned, boo. <clears throat> I'll be Now back. that the eyes are done, we're gonna move into foundation. Um, I have a few heavy duty matte foundations and I'll go over all of them and the shades that I use and then I'll tell you what I do if I'm not trying to go full on matte. So number one matte foundation that I use is my Kat Von D Locket foundation. This is in the color 76 Deep Warm. I love this foundation. It will keep you matte to the point where it takes out like all dimension in my face again i am an oily girl so i do like a little bit of my oils to show through this won't let not nan little bit of oil come through especially when i've done my heavy duty priming so when i use my heavy duty primer when i apply my loose uh um mineral or i'm sorry my loose powder on top of my primer and then i apply this child i'm trying to stay matte and this will do that for me. Second foundation that I use is my Estee Lauder Double Wear. This is in the color 6W1 Sandalwood. This stuff is super pigmented, very thick, will certainly give you, both of these are full coverage foundations. They will give you a flawless finish, girl. I'm talking flawless, okay? and it will keep you matte all day, has a beautiful coverage. I use this really only with special events because it's pretty expensive and um, it's just a pretty foundation, so heavy duty. My next foundation is my Lancome Tint Do Idol Ultra. This is in the color 500W. Again, these are like my higher end matte, full coverage foundations. I wouldn't say actually this is as full coverage as these two, but it's a beautiful finish. I love this foundation. It's very, very beautiful. I seldom grab it. Um, foundations that I just really, really like, I, I'll save for special events. And um, this one I'll wear on a pretty regular basis. It's actually not quite as expensive as these two, but um, it does do a great job of keeping you matte all day. So that's these three. Those are my higher end foundations lie so one more i just bought this this is the black up uh fluid mattifying foundation this is in the color 12. uh i bought this just recently so i don't quite have a review on it yet i've used it once or twice already since i've gotten it and i do like it the undertone in this is amazing which is why i bought it because i've heard that black up makes amazing foundations for women of color and they match the undertones really well and as you can see all of my yellows coming through and that's really hard to match sometimes so that's why i bought this um i do recommend it i don't personally or i'm sorry i recommend it based off the recommendations that i've read and heard about online um i don't necessarily have a review about it just yet from what i've used of it so far it did keep me matte 
um, and I do like it. I haven't used it quite enough to give like a full on review. Last foundation that I actually love, this is Drugstore. This is the Revlon Color Stay in the color 410 Cappuccino. For a drugstore foundation, this keeps me mad. Like I'll grab this on a regular day basis. Again, because I've been in the summer, or it's summertime here, and my son does track. Uh, this color normally is a little bit dark for me, but right now it matches really, really well, actually. So this is a great foundation. If you don't want to spend 30, 40, 50 dollars on foundation, go to the drugstore, buy this. Great foundation. This is the combination oily mixture, so it's one that's gonna keep me matte pretty much all day. Girl, for $12, totally worth the buy. Definitely recommend this foundation. So today, I'm not going to an event that I need to stay matte all day. I'm going to church today, um, and I don't like to look so matte that my face is flat, where all of the oil can't break through. It's not a look that I personally like. So what I will do is take one of my high du heavy duty mattifying prime foundations, one of the ones that I just mentioned, and I'll mix it with um, either a normal foundation or a hydrating foundation. And it kind of gives me that satin look and allows a little bit of my oils to come through. And that's actually my favorite look because I do like dewy skin. It's hard for me to achieve dewy skin because I am oily. So mixing it and giving me kind of a satin finish is kind of where I'm living right now. So I just recently picked up the NARS Sheer Glow in Benares Dark 3. And I have another one that I love and I use it all the time. It's just a little bit light, not a little bit, it's quite light. So anytime I have foundation that's too light or maybe doesn't have the yellow that I'm looking for, I'll use that one. All of the foundations that I previously mentioned are my color, so I don't want to drown out um, any of the yellow or anything like that and make it too light. So I'm gonna mix a little bit of this. I just have a palette here and I'm going to mix a little bit of the sheer glow onto the palette, a little bit of the black up foundation and dab it into that mixture. And I'm just going to take a flat eyeshadow brush. Doesn't matter what you use. You can use your finger, uh, a stirring spoon, you can use whatever you want. And I'm just going to mix those two together and get them really well mixed in. And this is basically creating a new finish. It's gonna give me that satin finish that I want. And then I'm just going to take the excess that's on here. If you have acne prone skin with a lot of hyperpigmentation, I recommend using something like the Morphe M40, M439 brush. It's just very, very dense. I'm gonna pick up that product and stipple it onto your skin and it's gonna give you that super full coverage. Um, on an everyday basis, this isn't what I do. I normally just use a wet, a damp beauty blender. This is gonna sheer out the foundation a little bit, but it's gonna give it a really nice flawless coverage, which I like, and I don't mind some of my imperfection showing through on an everyday basis, especially when I'm not doing pictures. Um, I don't have to look. Oh my God, I love this. And I think what you're seeing is that black up. Look how pretty that looks. Again, if I was going out or going to an event, I would probably grab that Morphe brush, but on an everyday basis, I'm definitely a beauty blender girl. And again, and I didn't color correct, and some of my imperfections are coming through. You can kind of see them here, but I have freckles as well up here, thanks to my grandma. And I don't mind them peeking through. I really don't. Actually, I prefer them to peek through. But old acne scarring on an everyday basis, they don't bother me. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with this. I'm actually very happy with this. I love the way it looks. It looks effortless. It looks natural. It's not too dewy. It's not too matte. Like you can still see a little bit of shine, but it's not overpowering. So this is the finish that I like. So what I'm going to do is move on to my concealer. Because we're focusing on oily skin, which means you want matte foundations, matte primers, all of that. I'm going to reach for my NARS uh, Soft Matte Complete Concealer. This is in a pot. <clears throat> this is in the color Amande. This is what it looks like. And this gives beautiful coverage and it's not hydrating, so it's not gonna leave me oily throughout the day in my T-zone area, which is why I do like this. So I'm just gonna use a flat tip concealer brush. This is the M Morphe M705 brush. 
just gonna dip a little bit into there and there we go and when I used to do this before using that Olay Hendrickson I could see my pores right through here like they would just dip into it and I can see the little like crevices and now since using that that's completely not completely gone away but it's definitely minimized and I like to use this I can use it down my nose and not worry about getting oily because it's matte and I love that so again we're gonna go in with my beauty blender and we're just gonna blend this out and it blends so effortlessly, so smoothly, like you don't have to work hard. It just melts into your skin. Very nice highlight there. Can you see it? Um, but I don't look shiny. And you can see my skin still has some oil, but I'm not shiny. This is what I love. My baby just walked in. Yes, Joe. Thank you, my love. Okay, we're gonna continue to blend out. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is set. Anytime you use a cream product, you wanna set. If you're an oily girl, you can stand all of this oil, I mean all of this powder. So we powdered before, we did a primer before, we're gonna add powder right now, but I can handle it because my skin does still get oily and it'll break through and not have me looking cakey. So I use two different um, loose setting powders and setting powders the purpose of a setting powder is to set or lock in your makeup so it doesn't move throughout the day which is a problem when you have oily skin your oils will come through and it'll start breaking up you can see this the foundation separating or breaking up on your skin throughout the day so you add your setting powders to lock them into place so that doesn't happen and doing all of these steps will definitely you'll notice the longevity of your makeup so what I'm going to first use again is the Laura Mercier translucent translucent loose setting powder this is in the color translucent and this is the original formula it's kind of a sheer not buttercup but it's more of a white powder a beige color and I just use that in the areas that I highlighted okay underneath my eye then we're gonna go cupid's bow chin and forehead and down the nose then everywhere else i like to go back to that translucent same brand laura mercier loose translucent powder and this is in the color medium deep and i'm going to go everywhere else and this is going to lock your foundations in or i'm sorry yeah your foundation into place okay normally what i would let that do is sit and then i would do like my eyes but because that's already done, I'm just going to wipe this off. I don't have to bake long because I did do all of those prior steps. So I'm pretty locked in right now. Um, so I'm not going to bake it long. I'm just going to dust it away and move on. Okay, so to dust this away, I'm going to use my Mineralized Skin Finish by MAC in Dark Deep. And I know what you're thinking. Melissa, this is so, first of all, this is so many steps. Again, I don't do this on an everyday basis. I'm talking about for special events. Um, and then the second thing you're probably thinking is, oh my God, this is like a lot of powder. So let me tell you why I'm going in with this and what's the difference. So what we just did was apply a setting powder. The purpose of a setting powder is to set or lock your makeup to give your makeup longevity, which means it'll last throughout the day and it won't break up. This is a mineralized skin finish. Notice the word finish. Finish, all that's going to do is add a finish. Think about your finishing powder as just adding a final touch to your makeup. Does that make sense? Just a finish. Your setting powder, all the purpose of that is to set or lock your makeup. It doesn't add any sort of finish. It just sets your, your makeup. So that's what this is. All it's going to do is add a mineralized finish to your makeup. It's going to blur imperfections. It's going, this one doesn't have like a matte finish or um, a luminous finish. So all this is going to do is minimize my imperfections and give me that airbrush look on the end. That's all this is. And I don't look cakey, by the way. Like you can see my skin and I'm looking at it in this mirror. It's not cakey. And again, I've used a lot of powder. But because I'm oily, I can handle all this powder without looking cakey. If you're dry, don't do this because you will look cakey. 
Okay, so what we're gonna do now is move on to blush, highlight, and then I'll add my spray. Okay, so for blush, I am going to use um, a matte blush. Sometimes I'll use a, actually, lies. We're gonna use a mineralized blush, which is a little shimmery, which I don't mind using. I mean, I am an oily girl, but remember, you don't have to do everything. So yes, if I were to highlight and add this, that would be quite a bit, but you don't have to do all of those steps. If you wanna use a, um, a shimmery blush, maybe don't highlight, skip the highlight and use that as your highlight instead. All the highlight's supposed to do is catch the sun and give you that dimension kind of in your skin. So you don't have to do a highlight in order to get that. You can get it with the blush as well. And sometimes I'll use a matte blush <clears throat> and then use a shimmery blush on top just as a topper. Gives the same effect. All you're looking for is the effect Effect. So shimmer is going to give that effect whether it's a highlight or a blush. So I'm going to first take Raisin by MAC. It's a matte blush and this is a very natural, it's going to give a very natural flush on dark skin. Very, very natural flush. Then I'm going to take Lovejoy, which again is mineralized, does have a little bit of a sheen to it. I'm not going to take a lot and I'm just going, see? See, can you see that? Can you see the difference? I can see it. This isn't, I'm not taking a lot. I don't wanna undo all that work we just did trying to mattify the skin. But just enough to catch the light. And I love it. I actually really like this. I like what we have going on here. And that's perfect, that's all I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna take a highlighter. You don't have to take a highlighter if you get super oily, if you have super porous skin. <clears throat> Maybe you don't use a highlighter at all because the highlight will magnify those imperfections and that is something you wanna be cognizant of when you're doing your makeup. You don't wanna highlight your imperfections. You wanna minimize them. And if you have porous skin or super oily skin, sometimes using too much highlight can overemphasize those. So use a matte blush, but if you do want that effect, maybe use a very light blush topper that is more shimmery and use very little bit and it'll still give you that effect without overdoing it and making your skin look, you know, emphasizing those imperfections. So that's what I just use. I love this. I absolutely love this. I'll tell you really quickly the sprays that I have, why I use them and the purpose of them. So the same way that there are finishing sprays, there are setting sprays. And the difference between the two, one is going to add a finish to the skin, either a luminous finish, a matte finish, or just add hydration to the skin. Or you can have a setting spray, which is essentially going to set your makeup, lock it, and give it longevity. That's the difference between a matte, I mean a finishing, and a setting powder and spray. Those are the two differences. So I always go in with MAC Fix Plus spray. This isn't a setting spray. I would actually call this a finishing spray. Um, that all and all I feel like it does is just melt all that powder into the skin and adds a little bit of hydration it's the only thing that I use this for I don't find it to set I don't find it to add a matte finish I don't find it to add a luminous finish it just adds hydration melts that powder it's really the only purpose that I use this for I have this mint matte NYX matte finishing spray so the finish on this is matte so the purpose of this is to add a matte finish to your skin. So it's gonna mattify any shiny areas. It's going to calm down and bring a matte finish. Then we have the Urban Decay D-Slick Makeup Setting Spray. Notice those words because those words are gonna give you an indication of, of what is this supposed to do. It's gonna give you the, that indication. So this is a setting spray. Setting spray is going to add longevity to your makeup. It's going to set that makeup. It's going to lock it into place. Think about Kat Von D. She has um, the locket foundation. She has the locket setting spray. That's what that. It's going to lock in your makeup. It's going to set your makeup, and it's going to give it longevity. That's a setting spray. This is a matte finishing spray. It's going to add that finish to your makeup. Okay. And then I just recently bought the Tatcha Luminous Dewy Skin Mist Finish. This is a finishing spray. It's going to add a dewy finish 
to the skin. It's gonna give your skin luminosity. I only use this like in this area right here if I'm looking a little too matte because I'm an oily girl and I don't wanna bring out too much luminosity and this will undo everything that we just did. So I'm actually not gonna use this today because I actually really like the finish that I have going on. I'm not too matte, I'm not dewy, I'm very natural. This looks like very natural skin to me and that's what I actually really like. So the first thing I'm going to do is use this MAC Fix Plus Spray. This is an old bottle. And I let that set and all it's going to do is add hydration. You're not going to notice much difference in my skin um, as far as a finish is concerned and it's definitely not going to lock my my um, makeup all day. All it's going to do is just help that powder just kind of melt into my skin and look more natural. Then what I'm going to do is take the NYX Finishing Spray, Matte Finishing Spray. And this is going to add that matte finish to my skin. And actually I am going to take a little bit of this and I'm just going to add it. I just want it on my cheeks since we didn't do the highlighter. So we're gonna let that sit. I'm gonna do lipstick and then I'll come right back. All right, so I'm back. This is the finished look. I was gonna go for a nude lip and I decided no. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna continue with my cool tone look that I kinda have. I have blue, I have blue under here and just went with the purple lip. I like it, shoot me. Um, so this is the final look. I hope that you learned something. I hope that you enjoyed um, this video and I hope that you got something out of it. So number one things when you're an oily girl, if you catch nothing else from this video, your foundation, meaning your skin prep is key. That is what's going to make all the difference when you apply your makeup to your face is your foundation, which means your skin prep. So I take a lot of time prepping my skin. My skin care routine, as far as my cleansers are concerned, my toner, my moisturizer, all of that. Um, I spend a pretty penny, but I feel like they actually work. You can see, look at this, no pores. I can always say that, girl. I could not always say that. So it's definitely played a role. Um, my primer that I use, I think that Becca Evermatt Poreless Found uh, Primer is about $42. I know it's expensive, but it makes a difference for me. I've yet to find a drugstore brand that does me the way that the Becca found, uh, Primer does. If you have a suggestion, please let me know. I'm always interested in saving my coins. Um, but you can... I mean, once your foundation is good, as far as skincare is concerned and your primer is concerned, feel free to just buy the Revlon Colorstay foundation. Like this is a great drugstore foundation that keeps me matte as long as I do those prior steps. Like this will this will do you right. Like I have no issue using this. Uh, the bottle is shaken up right now, but it's probably halfway. So I'm a, I am a foundation, listen, I'm a makeup junkie, but I am a foundation junkie. I have tons of foundations that I kind of mix and match all the time because I love concocting my, my personal finish that I like. But I'll just use this on an everyday basis when I'm going to work and I don't want to use my expensive stuff because I'm just going to work. I will grab this. It does a great job. So feel free to just grab something like this. Then um, if nothing else, I also hope that you learned the difference between a setting spray and a mattifying spray. That makes all the difference in what you're trying to achieve, what you're looking for, when you're setting your foundation, when you're um, bringing the finish that you want to your foundation. All of that's going to play a key role in how you know how the finished product looks. So again, I hope that you learned something. I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know if you want to see more of this. Let me know if something was unclear. Let me know if you have questions. I will answer them to the best of my ability, to the best of my knowledge. And that's it. I hope I hope you learned something. Uh, make sure to catch all of our other videos that we have. We have a ton of videos. Get caught up in the brown girl world. Let us know if you have any questions. Feel free to email us, tag us, all of the above. And be sure to subscribe to our channel. I hope that you like this video and you found us worthy to subscribe. Hit the subscribe button and don't forget to follow us on social media. I am at Miss Kev on stage, my partner, my best friend, my girl, my road dog. Don't forget to follow her. 
at Deandra Giselle. She's an awesome makeup artist, also has tons of tips. Uh, we couldn't meet up this week, so we're kind of doing separate videos, but when we get together, we always have a great time. So make sure you follow her, make sure you check out our other videos with the both of us together. And listen, I didn't add highlight, remember? But you see this is popping. And all I did was add that blush and a little bit of this to this area, same effect, okay? I hope you learned something. Until next time, bye.